Welcome to another Wednesday webinar from ESU8. My name is Katie Morrow, and this webinar was originally recorded in September 2016. I want to share with you today some exciting new information, or maybe some information that's been there that you weren't aware of, for teaching with Mac. You want to make sure you're taking advantage of some really powerful built-in features. And this is whether you have a Mac professionally yourself, or if you teach in a Mac environment for your students to access as well. In this webinar, I will expose you to some of the handy, easy, and sometimes lesser known capabilities of Mac OS in education. At the time of this recording, I'm using El Capitan as my operating system. If something looks or acts differently for you, check with your IT department for updating options. Know also that very soon in the next few weeks, on September 20th, 2016, as a matter of fact, Mac OS Sierra will be available, and then there should be even more new exciting updates to learn about. But to get started with today, I am delighted to announce Apple's new program for all educators called the Apple Teacher Program. I'm going to give you a tour, encourage you to sign up, get started, and you can become an Apple teacher as well. To get started, actually the easiest way is just to visit the education.apple.com website. At the top of the menu bar, when you click on Teachers, you'll notice a somewhat new redesigned and updated um, rich web page full of resources for teachers. Some of the many things on this page include some simple tips on how to use an app or how to use a feature within an app. You can click on the tip, watch the video. You can also see some real stories from classrooms and teachers around the world using Apple products. These are obviously for Mac and iPad, but so many resources are here that you could spend a lot of time, and I encourage you to bookmark it and come back often. For the purposes of our webinar right now, I'm going to give you a tour of the Apple Teacher Program. The first thing you would want to do is just sign up by using any Apple ID. It's a simple process, and you should get a, an email notification back within a matter of minutes, um, giving you access to the Apple Teacher website. I'll now log in with an Apple ID that I have just recently signed up with. And you'll see that the Apple Teacher Learning Center is actually um, another home page for you, another start page. The first thing that you would do if you want to be, come on your way to being Apple Teacher Certified is choose a path. Do you feel more comfortable with iPad or with Mac? Now you can do both. And you can mix and match. There's no limits to what you can do here. Um, but for the purposes of this webinar, I'll start with the Mac and see these are the eight skill areas that I can earn badges in. For each of those eight skill areas, I'll take a quiz and see if I can add a badge. When I've passed all eight quizzes, I will get the certification of being an Apple teacher and I can use the Apple Teacher 2016 logo with appropriate use on my website or on my presentation slides. It's really great bragging rights from within your campus or um, just personal learning and rich development for yourself, professional development for yourself. So let's go ahead and get started here with one of the quizzes so you can see how easy it is to be on your way to becoming an Apple Teacher. I'm going to start with the Mac badges, and here are those eight skill areas. Let's just start with the basic Mac operating. Um, we click on View, and not only does it offer me the quiz, but it starts with a starter guide. I can download a free book from the iBook store with a step-by-step -step guide so I can learn those essential skills if I'm new to the Mac or if I just want to brush up on things that I wasn't aware of. I can also use the online help site that's geared toward Mac, or I can find some workshops in Apple stores. Now I'm ready to take the quiz, so I'll earn my badge by answering five questions. You can see that these questions are, are geared for educators, so they have to do with teaching and learning. 
A colleague wants to use voiceover to support students with visual impairments. Where are the accessibility settings for Mac? They are in System Preferences. If I get it right, it gives me a yes and. So another tip to go along with that correct answer. So for the, the classroom, I can um, take it even a step further, perhaps. I can review my answer or go on to the next question. And if I do miss one, it gives me the exact page number of an option. Let's see if this one can be um, answered wrong on purpose here. Um, a page number in the, in the resource, in the starter guide, to refer to, to learn about what the correct answer was. Now, if you get four out of five right on the quiz, then you earn the badge for that particular skill set. And if you pass all eight quizzes, then you become the Apple teacher. I can't say enough about the learning that can be done now for any teacher anywhere on iPad and Mac with these resources that are obviously developed by educators for educators and are just beneficial to all. I can also attest to the value in all of those resources that go with it. Um, you can get to these books that are linked to each of the badges, obviously through the Apple Teacher Learning Center. You can also click on the scrollable banner and, and get to the whole collection, or you can just go to the iBookstore and search for Apple Teacher and it'll pull up all of the guides, all of the free books for iBooks that you can download and read and immerse yourself in to learn new skills. They're all free. You can see that the ones for Mac are white with a colored outline, whereas the ones for iPad are the solid fill color. Um, for example, the Mac Starter Guide would have been the one that went with the quiz we just took a look at, we previewed. So I can show you this one in iBooks. I've already downloaded it here. Chapter by chapter, it provides those step-by-step -step tips for doing many skills on the Mac. Great videos that demonstrate it. And oftentimes there are many quotes and um, tips from teachers. As you progress through the quizzes and the badges, I highly recommend the last couple of badges. Um, there's one called Enhancing Productivity with the Mac and one Fostering Creativity with the Mac. These really show and highlight workflows. So you can um, find out what to do with the skills you've learned and with the apps and the, the applications that you have just um, advanced your skills in. So these have basically lesson guides to go along with um, the, the Mac skills that you have just tested out and proficiency of. Really, really high quality materials. So with that, um, that should lead us into being inspired now to really take a look at the Mac operating system and some, like I said earlier, some built-in features, but maybe some features that you didn't know about or don't take advantage of as a teacher and hopefully I can encourage you to try some of them out. We're going to start just with Safari. Um, Safari has this feature that you can pin sites to your start bar up here for easy access. So I can put my ESU8 homepage or a link to Canvas or uh, perhaps my Flickr page. But those quick little um, bookmarklets, those short pinned sites are easy to access and don't take up a lot of space. If you wanted to make one, you would just go to Window and pin that tab, and it just becomes an icon there. Reader View is something that's been around for a little bit, and again, we haven't taken full advantage of that, I don't feel, in our classrooms. I'm just going to do a search for the September 11th anniversary as if I were doing some classroom research on the topic. Now, when I get back my results from my search, uh, many of them are um, very heavy with advertisements on the side, perhaps, lots of media mixed in, um, sidebars, 
and a lot of things that are, make it hard for a student to focus and truly concentrate on the reading. So with an easy click in Safari, if you're using the Safari browser, in your, up in your address bar where you see these horizontal lines directly to the left of where your URL is, you can click on that to toggle into Reader View. You'll notice now that it's stripped down, it's cleaned up, and I can just focus on the text. Um, the sidebars, the advertisements should all be eliminated. And even for a Wikipedia article like this example, it really helps me concentrate and focus my attention as a reader. Toggle back just by clicking that off and we're back to the full view of the website. Um, another thing that I can do while, with Safari is add websites to a reading list. If I want to um, bookmark them, but even more than bookmark them, save them for offline viewing. Perhaps I'm doing some research and I want to read the articles on the bus where I don't have internet connectivity. I can simply click, um, hover over the left-hand side of my URL bar again and click on the plus symbol. This will add a website to my um, saved, bookmarked, offline, viewable um, reading list. So it shows up underneath of the sidebar here. This hides the sidebar. This reveals the sidebar. These are my bookmarks and saved tabs. This is my reading list. And each of these websites, again, is saved for offline viewing. Another feature that I really feel um, has a tremendous power for um, productivity for students is to view on your Mac in split screen view. On any website that you are on in, in Safari, click and hold on the green plus or expand button. When you click and hold, it brings up one half of the screen with the Safari window you're currently on, maximized and fit nicely on that space, and the other half of your screen you choose. For this example, I might bring up a pages document where I could take notes. Now I can multitask. I can read and type my notes at the same time. Without having to toggle between windows, it's in a very easy to use split screen view. To get out of split screen view, you can just hit escape and it takes you back to what you're familiar with. So those are some of my favorite kind of newer features in Safari. Um, it also might be worth mentioning that if you do lose your mouse from time to time, you can just wiggle it and it automatically kind of grows larger. I don't know if you saw that, but that often happens where you can't find your mouse, you just wiggle it and it'll pop out at you so that you can view it easily. Um, another feature is the increased capability of notes, where we can um, do more with notes than even in the past. Um, you can always make those folders of notes, and I would encourage my students to do a folder, a new folder for each subject perhaps. One of the new features you can do is add a checklist. So in this note, and I'll just hide the, the folders for now, um, I could not only type text, put URLs and graphics, but I could also put a checklist so that you can actually interact and check those things off. So it's kind of a combination of tasks and reminders along with or right within a note. Um, I really love being able to sync those notes throughout all my devices um, by saving them in iCloud. I can pull something up on my phone and have it instantly updated on my Mac and vice versa. So for students, if they do get um, comfortable with using notes, start a new note, um, type in their text, and just insert a checklist, and they get those checkable dots. Um, inserting an image is easy as well. It's this button here. You can go to your media browser and find anything on, on your Mac to add right to it or drag and drop. That's notes. Um, PhotoStream is something that I just find intriguing as well.
Photo stream is maybe not as educational as other things. However, I can totally see if you were on a class field trip and you were trying to share images or uh, working on a yearbook team and you wanted um, everyone to have access to everyone's images, you could set up an iCloud photo stream. So I have done this with a couple of personal uh, photo streams. So for example, with a family shared photo stream, and added all of my brothers and sisters and parents, their Apple IDs to it. So now any image or any photo that they take on their Mac or their iPhone or their iPad, if they send it into those shared feeds, anyone can see it. You can see some of the other features here too. So the people who subscribe to it can also post or they potentially maybe you don't want them to post maybe you don't want your students to be able to add to it you just want them to have access to a collection of photos that you share with them a public website and then whether or not um, people would get notifications or you would see notifications the notifications show up in your activity feed you can see when people post photos when they make comments um, just a really great use of doesn't take up any in the iCloud space, it's just saved in the cloud and you all have access to it. Also with, um, I, I fo or with photos or any photo, the ability to share um, by dragging or by using AirDrop. And this is not just photos. This would be notes or many of the built-in OS opportunities. When you have that image up, you just click the send out arrow and you choose AirDrop from the menu. Now many of us as teachers in the classroom do utilize AirDrop pretty well. Um, but here I can easily send an image or a note or a website from my Mac to my iPhone to my iPad or back to my Mac even without Wi-Fi. So I would say get comfortable with looking for that send out share arrow. Um, it's in more places than you realize. And when you do that, it broadens your um, productivity capabilities, especially in the classroom, being able to um, have students hand things into you or you to real quickly exchange an image or a file with your students by using AirDrop. Also AirPlay, which oftentimes gets confused with AirDrop. AirPlay though is the being able to broadcast to, for example, an Apple TV. Um, let's go to just a web page that has a video on it here, a Vimeo page. And if I was connected to an Apple TV, I can AirPlay then up to that Apple TV. Um, one of the new features with AirPlay is the ability to, um, when you're on a video, a website that has a video, it just full screens the video and doesn't um, display any of the distracting information around it. So with just a couple of clicks here, I would be able to play that video full screen for my classroom. Next is QuickTime. Now, this is one I won't be able to show you very well because I'm actually using it to record this webinar. Um, but when you open up QuickTime on your Mac, it's built into the operating system, so just use the Spotlight search for QuickTime and find it if you can't. Um, it's the three-dimensional blue Q looking icon if you do have it in your dock. When you open up QuickTime, it doesn't really look like anything is running, but if you notice that the active program displaying in my menu bar, um, it does show that QuickTime Player is what's running. Under File, here's an easy, easy access for students or yourself to do a movie recording. It would use the built-in camera on your Mac, the iSight camera, um, and it would be able to record something without having to do any editing at all in iMovie. Um, just real fast and easy. You just hit record and stop. An audio recording would be similar to using GarageBand, but again, without having to go through the tracks and setting up a new GarageBand project and exporting it, you would just simply go to File New Audio Recording in QuickTime, um, record your voice, maybe doing a speaking quiz in, in a foreign language class, or maybe just recording a reflection of 
what the students learned, um, and then they hit stop, and they can airdrop that back to you, or put it into a Dropbox or whatever. Screen recording is even the most powerful um, feature, I feel, of QuickTime, the ability to record everything on your screen, like what I'm doing right now. When I hit stop and when I'm finished with this recording, I will be able to send it right to YouTube or wherever I want to for um, somebody else to view later on. I could send it through my LMS for my students to watch. I can do a little bit of trimming if I want to um, under the QuickTime menu. It would be edit and then there would be the trim feature would be available after I hit stop. Um, but really it's mostly just for that quick no frills um, recording of media using your Mac. Um, another really powerful feature that I don't think a lot of people know about is the ability to project your iPad screen through your Mac without using a third-party app or software. Um, so what you do is with QuickTime you have to plug in your iPad first with a sync cord and then you go to file new movie recording. But instead of using the built-in EyeSight camera here, we're going to cheat to the iPad. And now, and that's because I'm recording at the same time. Oh, there it is. It is kind of working. <laughs> I'm just really confusing it because I'm recording the screen and I'm trying to also record the iPad screen. But you get the idea here. And it's it's uh, really pretty quite amazing that you can just plug in your iPad. Don't have to worry about um, Apple TV or anything like that. If you have your Mac connected to your projector, then you can show your entire class everything you do on your iPad screen through QuickTime. I hope that makes sense. Make sure you ask if, if for some reason it doesn't. And then finally, I want to uh, kind of close out today with iBooks. Now iBooks is, um, has been built into the Mac or free, available for free on the Mac for quite some time. And many of you are probably comfortable using the digital multi-text books, um, especially the ones built in iBooks Author for the Mac. Um, I just, I, just I, I, it, I cringe when I know that people aren't taking full advantage. And so I want to show you how easy it is to um, download a book from the iBook store and then use the features that are built in. So let's go ahead and open up, um, oh, let's do the Mac Starter Guide again. And just a couple of things really quickly. When you um, pinch to the middle, you get the chapter view at a time. So you get to scroll a chapter at a time. And if you want to drill down into that chapter, just click on one of the page thumbnails and then scroll through that way a page at a time on any word on your screen. If you click on it, it pops up the dictionary and the thesaurus definition for any word. It doesn't even have to be one that they entered into um, the, the built-in glossary that they built when they made the book. It's just defining any word using the dictionary. Um, you can also add notes to any page. So once you highlight a piece of text, it gives you the option to add a note. And you can type whatever you want here. Um, and even when you leave that page, it will be available to you in the notes kind of tab here. A really great feature also is to study those notes. They look like flashcards when you hit the study button. On one side of the card is whatever you highlighted, and on the other side of the card is whatever you typed as your note. So encouraging our students to interact with digital texts, to, to customize and personalize their review and their study, um, to annotate them and to add meaning beyond the text and then to review it through the notes, that's all very possible using the iBooks features. Even if your book isn't fancy with lots of widgets, it can simply contain reading text and some visuals, and students can still take advantage of these simple skills of annotating and thinking about what they're reading about. So I want to finish with a couple of um, additional resources 
for any educator interested in using Apple products in their classroom. The first is an iTunes U for Educators collection. Um, this has been around for a little bit, but I want to remind teachers that iTunes U is more than just the free higher education courses. In this iTunes U for Educators collection, there's some tools, some books, some free books, teaching resources, including books and courses created by Apple Distinguished Educators, lesson ideas, tools for formative assessment, accessibility and special education, digital literacy and citizenship collections, and then individual courses and books are listed out in these scrollable bars that um, really highlight great content for specifically for educators content for students and some success stories about classrooms that do use Apple products at the bottom so again a lot of time to peruse and uh, see the available resources but definitely worth the time that you spend there in the iTunes U um, section designated for educators so that's about all I have today. I um, hope that you learned a new tip or so. Um, remember that the next version of the operating system for Mac, Sierra, is coming out September 20th. Um, there'll be even more maybe then to share as well. Um, in addition, this webinar mainly focused on Mac, but there are lots of great features available for iOS as well. Um, iOS 10 just came out today on the day of this recording, September 13th, 2016, um, and all kinds of great updates from Apple Education. Um, if nothing else, though, please consider trying out the Apple Teacher program, especially the Apple Teacher Learning Center and the free books. And as always, if you have any questions, with anything at all, don't hesitate to reach out to us at ESU8. We'd love to help you, work with you, um, and make learning even greater with the help of the technology resources that you have available. Thanks so much, everyone. Good night.